Hello and welcome to Upside Down. As you can see, now we have a camera setup as well. For those of you that are not familiar with the channel, I'm doing tutorials which are useful for 3D environment artists and especially for people that want to start in the game industry or are already in the game industry and want to improve their skills. In today's video, I actually want to talk a little bit more about planning and creating your first game on your own. So let's start. So first thing, is to make a plan. Making a plan is a very important step of creating your game project, because when you have a plan, you can follow it, and also it helps you understand in what stage your project is and what kind of other help you might need for the project. You can make a very simple plan just on a piece of paper or just in some Word or Excel file, or a better way to do it is to use some tools which are for project management and for tracking your progress. In my professional work, I usually use Jira, but for my free projects, I use Asana. Asana is a free to use, of course you have some paid features, but in general it's free to use software and it's very easy and very simple interface. Step number two, creating a grey box design. Making a grey box design for your game, it's a very important part, because it will help you not only design your levels and test everything before you start doing your art, but as well you can also test some cameras, you can test composition and how everything feels and looks together. But as well, if you're working with other people, you can very easily explain them the metrics and what you need for your game. In my practice, we usually build the levels from starting grey box design, which eventually evolves to be the collision of the objects, and we just improve on top all the visuals of this model. It's a very nice way of developing your games, because when you do it like this, you already know that all the metrics for the gameplay are working fine, and you are not going to go back and forth and changing things when already you've baked all textures, because it will take you a lot more time to edit those instead of editing just some boxes with a simple grey material. Step number three, it's going to be choosing your game engine. This is also an important step as it's not only about choosing your game engine, but also the platform that you are going to develop your game. Some of the popular choices that you can take are Unity or Unreal Engine 4. Unity is essentially more popular about developing mobile games and especially 2D games, while Unreal 4 is more popular about creating 3D games. This doesn't mean that you cannot create for other platforms or other types of games with both engines, but essentially it's a little bit more optimized and there are a lot of other features which will help you build up the game faster. The important part of choosing your game engine is to create a plan of how to optimize your models. Tip number four is going to be to test your game. This doesn't mean only to test it on your site, but also to give it to friends of yours or to other people to test your game and play it whenever you are finished with your grey box designs. Of course, test it not only when the game is in a grey box design, but as well on every other stage. Create a list of milestones in your planning and then after each milestone, give it to friend of yours and start testing it. One tip that I can give you there is don't interfere with the testing. Leave them to play and just observe from the site what are they going to do. Are they going to find some new bug? Are they going to be stuck there? Is it enough understandable for everybody? Is it friendly? Is it interesting? Are they gonna be bored? And just observe and listen to their feedback. Take all the notes and after that, based on all the feedback that you gathered, make decisions and improve the game. This is a very important step because developing a game takes months and months of work and being stuck in your own development, you can easily forget about some certain features or you can easily not see some mistakes that you've made. Even testing it with a couple of people can already give you a lot bigger database and a different set of eyes so that you can improve your game. And my last tip for today is going to be something which is not very ordinary. Keep documentation of your game. It's very important to keep documentation of your game, even if it's a very simple one, of certain features that you implemented, how they were implemented, as well as some plans for growing your environment or creating new characters or adding any kind of new features. What keeping the documentation essentially does is helping you if you want to onboard new people on your project, as well as if the development of the project continues for a very long time, it helps you remember how certain features are implemented and how you did certain things. This is very useful, especially if you're doing your project on your free time. Creating a game requires a lot of different disciplines, a lot of different small things that needs to be implemented, fixed or modified, and keeping everything in your head up to date is not something that you really want to do as you want to concentrate on new things and new features that you're gonna be implementing. I hope that you liked today's video, I hope also that you are happy with my setup, leave a like and a comment down below, see you next time!